Hello to everyone. My name is Osha. As you already saw, I have invited you to join a presentation Pilot Job Hunting Preparation for an Interview with an Airline. If you have questions, you are always welcome to send them directly to my email address showed below and I will answer as soon as possible. So, main market players, aircraft manufacturers like Boeing or Airbus predict that in the next 20 years the number of aircrafts will rise up and deliveries will be around 33,500 of new aircrafts. And this number is a conservative one. So it is 1,200 new aircraft per year. At the same time, they also predict that in 20 years the need of pilots will double and reach 470,000 pilots working in world's airlines. But at the same time, Baltic Aviation Academy gets a lot of requests asking to help to find a job. This question is seen as around 70% of all requests. So this means that the issue to get a job is really important for pilots and, of course, difficult one. So once again, Baltic Aviation Academy made a research of own clients, airlines of course, that could help to understand the process of an interview and difficulties to get a dream job to become a commercial passenger jet pilot. We especially thank these companies for their very detailed answers uh, that helped us and uh, I hope it will help you too. So this presentation will be structured of feedback got from our clients and insight of our Baltic Aviation Academy instructors and their practice. So, uh, pilots pay less attention to all presentations and closing of an interview and concentrates only on the interview. Interview is a complex process and structured not only of an interview by itself. So, the interview is an intermediate step. That's why Baltic Aviation is here and we are ready to help you. I have gathered you here to talk uh, more about how to prepare an interview, how to make an interview smooth, to remind that an interview is structured of a meeting with HR specialist, of assessments, a skill test, and a meeting with director of flight operations. At the end of this presentation, I will provide some tips. So let's get started and uh, let's prepare uh, for that interview. Never think that you know everything. When you start thinking like this, you will lose your strength and become a standard pilot in a crowd. Can you imagine how many standard pilots airlines see? I don't want that my pilots would look like this. Could we agree this? Good. Presentation process also has steps. So, I invite you to this interesting journey and let's take the first step. Often selectors read CVs outside working hours. They may have a pile of 50 CVs from which to select 5 interviewees. It's an evening and they would rather be in a pub with friends. If reading your CV is a hard work, unclear, badly layout and containing irrelevant information, they will just move on to the next CV. According to BI Business School made research, they came to a conclusion that employers may spend as little as 45 seconds reading a resume before branding it not of interest, maybe, or of interest. So treat the selector like a child eating a meal. Chop your CV up into easily digestible morsels, bullets, short paragraphs and note form and give it a clear logical layout with just the relevant information to make it easy for the selector to read. If you do this, you will have a much greater chance for an interview. So uh, here I will show you some tips how to write an excellent CV. So I will start from the beginning and there are two types of CVs. So it's chronological, outlining your career history in date order, and skill-based, 
highly focused CVs which relate your skills and abilities to a pilot job by highlighting these skills and your major achievements. So, firstly, choose the type that suits you more. So, here I have highlighted the difference between these two types. So, as you see in a chronological CV, you need to focus on chronology. It could be done in two ways. The present or, well, the newest job on the top, leaded by the older ones. Or it could be done in reverse way, of course. So, let's say, well, right now you are working in a company X right now. So you need to state since when you are working there. Before this company X, you have been working uh, for the company Z. So you need to state the interval while you have been employed there and well so on. Always for a pilot it is very important to show flown hours. So in this type of CV it could be shown in an education paragraph or directly near each employee. In a skill-based CV, you need to concentrate on a skills for a pilot and that these skills would be uh, valued in that particular airline. What could skills be for a pilot? Let's see. Independence, decisiveness, manageability, sociability, and, uh, well, objective judgment, well, and others. So show your relevant skills. In this type of CV, flown hours could be stated as achievements. Carefully and clearly laid out CV. Your CV should be not too cramped and not with large empty spaces either. Your CV is not an essay. Make sure it is clearly laid out. Once again, CV is not a book, so each page must be on a separate sheet of paper. It's a good idea to put your name in a footer area so that it appears on each sheet. Attractive spot. Yes, there is one attractive spot in a CV where selectors tend to pay most attention to. This is typically around the upper side of the first page. So make sure that this area contains essential information. Try to find the way how to get your CV different than the rest CVs, but to keep it very professional. For example, use a different color of paper for mailing your resumes. Well, not blue, but let's say gray, creamy, and uh, other similar colors. Or let's say use a different size paper for your resume. Do you ever have one? Well, maybe a few pieces of paper that in a pile of papers are a different size than others. They stand out, right? Of course they do. They stand out from the rest. So, so like in these samples, like Jeremy Pack shows passengers as recommended persons. In a second one CV, Paul Morgan shows his experience in a circle. So, this is more different ways to show yourself for an employee. So, try to be professional, but at the same time, be different. This step, I think, is quite clear. Our clients mainly told that they put their job advertisements in their pages. Recruitment agencies, uh, like, well, our mm, partners are Innovation, Aviation CV, but, of course, there are others like Pass Aviation, Aero Professional, Aircrew Global, Confair Recruitment, and others. Search in their database or ask their own pilots to recommend some. Of course, social pages – Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, MySpace, and others. So it means that all these places must be searched and your CV must be in all possible databases. Not always your skills will fulfill their requirements, but it can't stop you from sending them your CV. What would you lose? In a worst case, your CV will be added in their database. So maybe not now, but later. This will bring the dream to you. Also, look for a friend in an airline. So, you have done all what was mentioned earlier. You did a really good job. Now, act positively and get that interview. 
Would you like to get some tips how to get that interview? So here are they. Inside contact. If you are interested in a specific company, get an inside contact. This means proactively trying to meet someone from the company or a friend or a friend situation. People hire people they know. It's comfortable. Therefore, do whatever it takes to get an inside contact. Have you ever sent a registered letter? All it requires is going to the post office and paying a few euros, well dollars, or any other currency, to send it registered for confirmation. This means that the recipient of the letter must sign for it. And I'll bet they will sign. They are curious and want to know what it is. By sending it uh, registered to the hiring manager, you are ensuring that your letter has reached its destination. It has reached the hiring manager. This is a huge plus. Yes, a gift. Let's say add a candy with your name on it. Maybe chocolate of an aircraft. You know, HR specialists are usually women. So you know how women like chocolate, yes? Or, of course, it could be a calendar with your name. So these are just samples. Be creative. What do you have to lose? Walk into the office, well, of course, if you live in, well, close to it, and ask for the hiring manager, by name. Just say you need to discuss the current job opening with him. Sounds crazy? It works. They will see you as a being determined, proactive, and outgoing. I have found this trick and I would like to share it with you. In larger companies, a secretary or an office assistant will open the resume for the employee. This person is responsible for screening for junk mail and to weed out non-qualified candidates. Therefore, here is the trick. Take a regular post-it note and write something like, well, this one looks good, J. And attach it to your resume. Who is J? Who cares? The point is that the hiring manager will get a resume with a post-it note on it stating that it's good. Therefore, they are most likely to pay close attention to the resume at the direction of another employee. By the time the person realizes it's not a note from their mail screener, you already got in your resume reviewed. Is it deceptive? No, it's effective and innovative advertising. You got an interview. Perfect. Now you should spend some time researching the airline. This will give you a confidence while you could be asked any questions on their fleet, destinations and structure. The most important to have an answer about this company. This will show your interest in it and also this will all allow you to ask the employee questions. This is very important. Make a list of your questions and ask them. Employers like questions. It means you are interested. You are going to be a pilot in a very good airline. Imagine how a pilot should look there. Decide what to wear and get your clothes ready the day before. You don't have to buy a new outfit. Aim for a neat, clean and tidy appearance. If you look good, it will help you to feel good. Here is also important. This is not a club, bar or a friend meeting. One of our clients mentioned that if you have a long hair, you will be dismissed just before the meeting. Consider all these things. It could sound discriminative, but you would like to work there, yes? You should think about who will be interviewing you. If it is the person who would be your manager, if you got a job, of course. The interview may be more detailed. If it is the personal manager, the interview may be less detailed but could still be a testing. Also, finding out how long the interview is likely to last will give you an idea of how detailed the interview will be once again. Find out how many people will be interviewing you and their positions in the company. This will help you to prepare for all kind of questions they may ask. 
So possible questions could be uh, like in this uh, presentation, but of course I could give you more. Let's see. One. What airplane are you most familiar with? Other could be what is the max takeoff weight, landing weight and ramp weight? What's the fuel capacity? Can you explain how the landing gear system works? Can you describe pressurization system? Well, and others. Be prepared for this. So, let's sum up. Just to clarify the process to get an interview. According to our clients, the first filter is CV. It must be so well done and easy to understand that would be sent to a second stage. So, CV is usually sent to HR department, where employees pick those CVs that are well done with all needed details. These pilots that pass this stage get an opportunity to see the company inside during the interview. Also, a research of a company is important. So, you see how preparations are important? Okay, okay. I know, this is the most important for you. So far, you did everything right. You have practiced your interview. You know everything about this company. You are prepared. Accept that it's natural to be nervous and that you may have a fast heartbeat, clammy hands and butterflies in your stomach. You know that feeling? These are body natural ways of meeting a challenge. And in small doses, it can help too. You will make an impression in the first few minutes. It takes this time for people to assess you and store this information. Once you have made a first impression, it is hardly ever changed. It is important to make a good first impression. So, here is the structure of your future interview in an airline. First stage is an interview with HR department and, well, the HR specialists and uh, they could uh, present some tests and assessments during that. Second one is skill test in a simulator. And uh, of course, director of flight operations. So uh, you will have at the end to meet this person. All airlines could have their own specific things, but our clients mention this process. Firstly, you will have to pass the first interview that you are already in. Usually this will be followed by tests and assessments. Clients mention that they are usually testing your personality, English level, ATPL knowledge and others. So be prepared also that during this first interview you will most likely have to fulfill these tests. After this preselection is done. You were preselected after your first interview. I'm so proud of you. Now one of the last stages you will have skill test in a simulator. There are two structures of this. Airline could pick a simulator of different type of aircraft. You don't need to know this uh, aircraft, just they will check your communication, cooperation, situation awareness, decision making and leadership skills. Practical skill to fly of that exact type you will get with type rating course. And the second one, you will be asked to fly a simulator of that exact aircraft that you are going to be working on. So your possible employee will check your flying skills also. Usually, this is the last process. If you pass the stage, you are there. This is the main person who makes decisions. Impress him and job is yours. During our search, directors, flight operations and HR specialists of our clients specially highlighted what they would like that pilots would avoid during the interview. So here is what we uh, have gathered. Avoid being not you. Try not to pretend who you are not and say things you imagine that the recruiter wants to hear, even if it's not true. As one manager of an airline told, someone of the candidates come to make a show. This is a big mistake. Most recruitment professional try to conduct natural, honest interview and has to ask more difficult questions or produce more stress to see natural candid behavior. So I am sure you are having already a lot of stress. Don't make it more difficult for yourself. It is clear. We have discussed this in a preparation stage. 
avoid choosing the wrong dress code. Avoid coming to an interview not knowing about the company and job. So, now you understand that preparation is needed, yes? And avoid thinking that you know everything. During the interview, you will surely be asked technical questions about the aircraft, like to define minimum block fuel, define V1 and others. Also, companies like to ask case study questions, so be prepared for this. All airlines we interviewed mentioned that sometimes even less experienced pilot may get the job over really experienced ones if he has outshining personality, great communication skills, and is really outgoing and managed to demonstrate his great team working and executive skills. A pilot not only has to have great technical preparation, but to be really charming in a person as well. So be that one. All our interviewed clients mentioned what you need to do. Firstly, go to any possible interview. Secondly, go to any possible interview. And once again, go to any possible interview. It is better to go on a first interview that is not your priority, because most likely you will not get this job. However, you will gain new interview experience during the, all those interviews. What is very good? Get any possible job. Stop chasing that airline. Instead, get an experience and you will be, see how that airline will start chasing you. So, statistically, uh, first interviews got uh, uh, by sending an average 25 CVs and the first job is got uh, by sending an average 70 CVs. So, uh, there is a direct link between the number of CVs sent and interviews gained. So, see you soon in an aircraft flown by you. Maybe some information was known for you, but this is our Bolt Equation Academy inside too, and of course, our clients' feedback. Especially thanks to these our clients that gave most insight to the current situation. So now, thank you for your time, and I hope this presentation will be helpful, and you will fulfill your dream.